Well, we are over halfway through November, which means December is right around the corner. Although you guys probably already knew how months worked. But what December does mean is that the first build of 2020 of iRacing is set to come out and there has been a lot of things teased, rumoured and all round discussed for this build. So why not have a little chat about what we would love to see when the servers come back after the maintenance period. Before we dig in though, the usual disclaimer of this being an opinion piece and little bits of pieces that I know of, but in no way shape or form has any of this been officially confirmed by iRacing unless otherwise stated. Now. I am an Australian and whilst I am much more of a GT driver, it is my national duty to say I am excited for the potential, yet unconfirmed to release of the Holden ZB, Commodore and Ford Mustang V8 Supercars. These were both officially announced on September the 5th 2019 and were simply stated as being under development for future addition to the simulation with the remarkably bare bones scan image of the two cars side by side. Since that initial article, more details have slowly emerged regarding these two cars, including that they'll both feature the new tyre model 7 which we'll dig into a little later, as well as the new damage model which we'll dig out of a wall later. And whilst I'm unable to show these photos in the video, I have even been able to see some images of the ZB Commodore being thrown around a track and the graphics look well and truly up to par, although physics still remain as an unknown for now, but with iRacing raising the bar each and every season, I don't feel the need to worry either. The supercars handle extremely unique in the real world being so heavy, yet high powered, all on a very low width Dunlop tyre. So I also cannot blame iRacing if these did unfortunately get delayed another couple of months to get everything correct because there truly is very, very little reference data they could use, unlike when they create something like a GT3 or a GTE car for example. These changes is leaving a lot of us in the Australian community absolutely sweating with excitement and should leave the super competitive V8 Scops and V8 Supercars E-Series with an entirely different outlook in terms of running order of teams and drivers. 2020 for Australians is set to be a big one. Briefly touched on there was the new Tire Model 7 and I think it is fairly safe to say, especially after the 2019 Season 4 build, that we'll see the updates rolled out onto even more cars. However, whilst I don't know anything behind the scenes, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some bigger categories getting the changes this time around. I'm looking at the VRS GT Sprint Series, Iris in Le Mans Series and potentially the Porsche Cup car which I would love to see, especially whilst we wait an official word on the future of the Porsche Esports Super Cup. Wouldn't that throw a curveball into a potential pre-qualifying series? And just while we mention Porsche there, unfortunately confirmed just last week by Alexander Horn in the forums, was the announcement that the Porsche 718 Cayman GT4 car would not be coming in for Season 1 of 2020. This is a pretty big shame for a lot of us, and whilst I'm not super keen on GT4 with its low power, low aero and high weight formula not exactly producing the best racing out there, it does mean that the IMSA Michelin Pilot Series remains TCR only for yet another season which is unfortunate considering the series is actually struggling quite a lot already. Some of the races not even going official unless they are a broadcast and strength of field race. The Porsche coming in would boost this series, but I suppose we are left waiting yet another three months. Just last week, I recently released a brand new video showcasing the very first scenes of Lernerville Speedway located in South Pennsylvania. Lernerville is four tenths of a mile and hosts a slew of dirt oval categories from street stocks, wing sprints, and right up to the super late models. But the really cool thing shown off in this video is that it has absolutely no walls or barriers on the backstretch which makes it truly different to anything else on the platform. This does lead me to have a few questions as to what happens when a car goes out of bounds at this racetrack, as cars simply disappearing and warping back to the pit lane as is the case right now would not be a great look, especially with this potentially happening quite frequently on this track with no backstretch walls. I'm sure iRacing has come up with a solid solution to this, even if it is just having quite a lot of runoff modelled on the side of the track to give cars time to stop and rejoin the circuit while a caution is thrown, but that isn't guaranteed so let's wait and see. The new damage model could be expected to roll out on a number of different cars too after a fairly successful release on the Skip Barber Formula 2000 in Season 4 of 2019. Only a few little tweaks were required on the Skippy, and these known fixes will have found their way into a range of other cars too. In iRacing's new damage model work in progress video, they showcased the Delara Formula 3, Aston Martin DBR9 and Chevrolet Corvette C6R GT1 cars, 4GT GT2 and the Audi RS3 TCR cars all with the new damage model on. 
That video was released on August the 9th, so with an extra few weeks of development time, I would not be surprised to see these cars get the changes made, along with any new car releases from this build moving forward. The damage model looks simply incredible, and unlike a lot of other sims that have damage, Irisic has a damage model quality that is equaling that of the incredible BeamNG drive game with soft body physics applied to the cars with proper deformation, rather than a preset level of damage seen on most games such as R Factor 2, Forza, and Assetto Corsa Competizione, you can only damage a front wing in two or three ways, you can only bend a rear wing in one or two ways. On iRacing, it looks truly fantastic, so a massive kudos to everybody involved, and I cannot wait to see it implemented further and further over the next few builds, but Season 1 2020? Well, we should get our second taste of it. AI has certainly been a discussion for a little while, and a lot of footage has come out and about, now showing its progression from build to build. My last known time seeing the AI way back in the BMW M8 GT Ecos release video in Season 2 of 2019. In that video, the AI could be seen taking slightly alternate lines and going side by side with one another which is showing off truly fantastic progress being made by the entire dev team. So with another 8 months of development after that, we can safely say that AI coming to iRacing is closer than ever. Although, do I think it could come in Season 1 of 2020? Yes, but not to every single car. From what I have heard, iRacing is having issues with a small handful of cars and how the AI tackle them. I imagine rallycross, dirt sprint cars, and changing track conditions could be one of these things with AI being difficult to balance on how they react to the changing grooves. However, for those cars that iRacing are happy with, or at least willing to release as a beta, I think this next build could be a fantastic opportunity. It allows a very different market of races to find their way onto the iRacing platform. At the end of the day, not everybody wants to compete online 24-7 and sometimes just likes to have a relaxed race in their car and track combination of their choice without worrying about I rating, safety rating, or even what week of the schedule it is. And just while I'm on the topic, for those that say they are never going to race against the AI as it's not why they signed up to the platform, that is absolutely fine. But just remember how useful it could be practicing for a major race, and having the AI dynamically evolve the track rubber and temperature over a stint, just like how it will be affected in the race. It's worth remembering there is a lot to be gained by everybody with AI. Every build, iRacing releases a massive amount of smaller, yet incredibly valuable tweaks and updates too, and it is always very difficult to predict what these might be. But either way, iRacing Season 1 2020 build is sure to be a great one, and I for one cannot wait. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and maybe even hit the subscribe button. It really does help me out quite a lot. Otherwise, I stream over on Twitch Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays with tomorrow's stream being in the Australian Online Supercars Championship at Lime Rock Park. It's another 60-60 round which I managed to win last time out. So it could be a great chance to tune in to see if I can lock away a double victory. I shall see you all in the next video next Thursday, guys. Peace.